how lucky to be the most jet lagged person on this panel and going first. <laughs> uh, I've, I've, new technologies always present kind of similar challenges when they, they emerge, whether it was radio, print, television, cable television, satellite television, now the internet. Each time there is a tension between the vast commercial potential and incentives and integrating these mass media technologies with uh, a healthy and functioning digital soci uh, a democratic society. What I, I suggest is that this time is not that different and the same principles, if not the same measures, can likely be applied. Certainly the same principles. So what is the situation now? Um, it bears noting that for the platforms, and the platforms are not all the same, they hate that, uh, the customer is not the user. The user is not the customer. The person who logs into Facebook is not the customer. Their customer are the, is, is their advertisers because that is the price of free to whom they are accountable, by and large, with most of, most of these companies that are, uh, have approached beyond uh, universality, they have, they're, they're nearly ubiquitous, as in one cannot exist in society without interacting with them in some way. They are accountable, they report back to their shareholders. That is not an equation that is going to lead to them making changes that uh, that in any that that and I mean and it's appropriate that they shouldn't make changes because they have a legal responsibility to their shareholders. So I have the concern I want to raise to the folks here is uh, the problem of faking it until you make it, which is a long cliche in Silicon Valley, and how that perhaps has led to a serious problem with platform integrity that has nothing to do with content but directly impacts democracy. So in Silicon Valley, and, and this is, it, uh, my favorite story of this is Reddit because they actually brag about this. You have to have, raise, to ven raise venture capital. They don't look for how much money you make when you're first starting your company. They look for how many app signups you have, how many users you have. Reddit likes to brag about how they created lots of fake users. I'm not saying Facebook or Google or Twitter have created fake users, but certainly there may not have been an incentive to, to, to handle large numbers of them at that stage. And they raised enormous amounts of venture capital that set them on the long road and the pressure to become public companies. And what I would suggest is, it, is that they don't actually have great capacity to handle fake accounts and, platform, and the fundamentals of platform integrity. Now, I know Facebook puts out reports saying that they suspended something like 1.9 billion users in their report. Great, good job. Unfortunately, if you read the small type under it, it says 99% of that, those users were suspended before they were ever active on the platform. They were, in other words, they're caught at sign up. So they're kind of have it, trying to have it both ways by saying they're both victims of lots of hackers coming in. But don't worry, it's not, don't worry shareholders, it didn't impact, impact their monthly active users. We found a case in our research on the European parliamentary election in Germany where uh, uh, there were lots of fake users and they did have an impact. Now, AfDi in Germany usually polls like somewhere between 10 and 15%, certainly leading up to the European parliamentary election. We took a look at, and by the way, we looked at uh, something like 80,000 Facebook pages across Europe. We, we, we looked at German political Facebook and we found something astounding. We found that 85% of all shares and interactions with political pages, that is uh, pages labeled as party pages or political candidates, were for AFD. 10 to 14% of the polls, 85% of the interactions. And since then, other researchers have validated this, so it's not just us saying this. How on earth does this occur? Because you could say, okay, a populist party will naturally gravitate towards uh, online media, because maybe they 
perhaps rightly, feel they don't get a fair shake in mainstream press. It's still impossible. You can beat your polls by a couple points in your share of online voice, but you can't beat it by 70 points, and that is what happened. So we dug deeper, and we found at least 200,000 accounts, which we are very confident are fake. And this has since been helpfully validated by Facebook in that they have suspended large numbers of them. And, and we have watched them do this. That's very troubling. And what's even more troubling is when you look at these accounts themselves, because they were not subtle. I'm not an expert on the Euro European far right, but I don't think AFD has a lot of su supporters in, uh, in uh, the United Arab Emirates or Tunisia or Nigeria, but we found enormous numbers of them. We found 80,000 accounts with two letter first names and two letter last names. Okay, maybe some people do, but I don't know if it's the most common name for supporters of AFD. And it certainly violates Facebook's stated policy on real names. So that tr troubles me that, uh, and we can't necessarily assert causation, but it's, it's certainly quite a coincidence that the one country where we found this at scale was the one where there was such a radical distortion in the digital field. Now, the, the, did this have an impact on the election? Is, now, that's a much more difficult question to an, answer. I do think that it had less of an impact than it could have, and this is perhaps something to consider in the positive side of policy. Uh, Germany and uh, even more so Finland have very high trust in their public media and specifically public television. And I suspect that this, this uh, and, and that's across the political spectrum, I suspect this gives society a certain amount of resiliency. Um, and that should be considered as, because that, that was, again, part of the solution to these previous technologies was creating those institutions as well. So um, I'm sorry to pick on Facebook. If I had more time, I would pick on the other platforms. Uh, uh, Twitter, actually Twitter is an interesting one because Twitter, tw no, that, that's, that's, that's an important one because Twitter was a kind of a cesspool a few years ago and it still has not some, some not great content. But I have noticed uh, a measurable change in what is surfaced to users. And I think part of the reason for that is the fact that 100% of Twitter is you can buy and license. And so lots of third parties can see it. If you, um, there's only seven that get the whole fire hose, but anyone can get 1% random sample. If you're willing to spend a fair bit of money, you can get a 10% sample. And if you're spend, willing to spend even more, you can get half of the entire network. So there's, and that's not true of the Google ad ecosystem or Facebook. Facebook, uh, if, uh, you have to know someone to get an access to, to CrowdTangle. Now, now they say they're going to now give it to researchers, which I say is great and long overdue. But I think there is a relationship between data transparency and the ability to independently evaluate what occurs on platforms and how they act. And, uh, and I think I've consumed most of my seven minutes now. So thank you very much.